What's going on guys, Unknown Player here, and today we've got the absolute mother load of Destiny 2 leaks. So much crazy info to go over. This is all from a GameStop strategy guide that someone got their hands on early and posted images of what's inside. The source of these images is called Supered Holster, and NFS Gaming is the person who made a Reddit post on these images. So those are the sources, but we've got a ton of stuff to look at. We've got new info on how Zero is going to work, a ton of exotics, the perks of the third subclasses, Obviously, if you're trying to avoid spoilers and info like this, this may not be the video for you. There's absolutely no story details or plot info like that. But depending on what you consider a spoiler, this is going to be a lot of info to digest. So jumping right in headfirst to leaks, we have a ton of info about the vendors and their locations, which is really interesting. We've got some of them like Darby, who is the postmaster in the farm. And then we also have people like KD, who you might recognize that is the tower postmaster. And she is located in the tower. So that's right. Just as the leak suggested, we are actually going to a brand new tower once we complete the game, I'm guessing. So it's going to be a tower and a farm, two social spaces. And this one is a new tower, not the old one rebuilt. It's simply a separate new tower somewhere else with a different design, different layout there is a new tower it is pretty strange because it does go against basically everything luke smith said in an interview how they don't want to have multiple social spaces and have you going around the place i'm guessing there will be much different things to do in each of them but there is going to be two social spaces so you've got tess everest as well in the farm and the tower you've also got tyra khan the farm and master hall is in the tower so there you go master hall is still alive and he is the crypt arc inside the tower you got Hawthorne in the farm and the tower. She kind of goes between them. Lord Shack's the same. You got Arkite, Banshee, K6, Akora, Zavala. You got Devrim K. He is the NPC in the European Dead Zone, as we know. Salone is the NPC inside Titan. Failsafe is actually the Nessus NPC. And Ashamir is the IO NPC. Now, the most interesting detail of all is Zer is back in this game. A good old Zer is back. But the most interesting detail is that he's not going to be inside social spaces anymore. He's going to be roaming around all four of the planets. So no longer is Zer going to be either the reef or the tower. Instead, he's going to be physically inside the European dead zone, Titan, Nessus or Io, which is so, so cool. I've always thought it would be really awesome if Zer was in said inside one of the locations. And you had to go hunt around and see where on the planets he was. I think you'll probably have one set location on each planet so it won't be that difficult. You don't have to scale the entire location because they are massive. But instead, you're now going into patrol to find Zer, which I've always wanted. But I never thought they'd do it, but there you go. Zer is now going to be inside planets of Destiny 2. So there was also another leak that happened today from someone called Rise Vine Hype. Now, they posted an image of someone's website who appears to have gone live a little bit too early. And they detailed all the content in Destiny 2, all the exotics, strikes, lost sectors, and the campaign missions. Obviously, no details of this stuff, but just names of things. So we can see in Kinetic Weapons, the Mida Multitool is returning. Also, the exotic Hunter Helmet, the Knucklehead Radar. There's also the young Ahamkara Spine as Gauntlets. There's the Sun Bracers for the Warlock, which might be the Sun Breakers, maybe something similar. And also the Starfire Protocol, which we know, and the Transversive Steps returning from Destiny 1. Now, in a second, I'm going to go over the rest of the exotics. So we've got a ton of perks for them, like 25 plus, and I'll go over the rest of them. But he also detailed all these strikes in Destiny 2, which honestly is a bit disappointing. There's only five strikes in Destiny 2, which I'm not sure if it's a misprint. I'm really hoping that this list just kind of forgot some. There's a lot more in Destiny 2, but five honestly would be very disappointing, especially seeing as we already know the Inverse Aspire. So four more, including that one. Now, something very interesting is that one of the strikes is called Savathun's Song. Now, Savathun is actually the name of Oryx's sister. So maybe it's something to do with Savathun. It's probably not going to be her inside the strike, but it is named after her. So maybe she is inside the strike. Who knows? But Savathun's Song, definitely worth paying attention to. So next up, let's look at some exotics. We've got the perks of the Hard Light, the Wardcliff Coil, the exotic Jubis Volley, and also the Vigilance Wing, which is that weird Charles or Azaris themed exotic we saw a couple of days ago. On top of that, a bunch of armor pieces to look at. So hard light first of all, this is a new ability to change elements, it's no longer void, hard light can switch through solar arc and void, now its perks are still the same, volatile light, runs for this weapon of no damage fall off, over penetrate targets and can ricochet of hard surfaces, and then its trait is the variable which is arc core, solar core or void core, so you can modify the weapon's element to be any of those which is actually really really cool. Now, we also have the Ward Cliff Coil, which is the real name of Dubious Volley. This one's got the same perks as seen before, so it advise a volley of rockets. It's also got extended mags, it's got volatile launch, and also Accurize Auto Launcher. This weapon automatically reloads on ammo pickup. So the Vigilance Wing, which is that Osiris themed gold exotic, which I did say would be exotic, and turns out it is. So the intrinsic perk is Harsh Truths. This weapon fires a five round burst, which we know when an ally nearby is killed, will gain health regeneration and increase movement speed. And the other exotic perk is Last Stand, improves weapon performance when the wielder is the last living member of a fire team. So this weapon is basically a send off for Trials of Osiris and essentially is the last resort perk inside one gun. It's all about being last alive and it's going to be very helpful inside Trials. 
So next up, we're going to look at a bunch of exotic armor pieces for the Hunter, Titan, and Warlock. A ton of perks to go over. So returning, we have the insurmountable Skull Fort. So kills with Arc melee abilities trigger health regeneration and restore melee energy. Pretty similar to Destiny 1. Another Titan helmet is called the Mask of the Quiet One. Grants ability energy when damaged and health regeneration when inflicting void damage. Looking at Hunter exotics, we have the Celestial Nighthawk returning. Modifies Golden Gun to fire a single high damage shot. Victims killed by the shot explode. I'd assume you definitely want to use this on the bottom subclass tree of the Gunslinger, which gives you precision damage for the Golden Gun. Otherwise, you'd miss out on a ton of damage. There's also the Foe Tracker. This one visually marks targeted enemies. That's it, so it sounds pretty garbage in my opinion. There's also a bunch of Hunter Boots. This is where things get slightly interesting. We have the Lucky Pants. Increased hand cannon, ready speed, and initial accuracy. Very specific, but also quite interesting. We have the Orifice Rig. This one is tied to the Night Stalk, which we'll talk about later. This one provides ability energy for each enemy, tethered by Shadow Shot Anchors. And then the most interesting one to me is the Stompies, or the Stomp EE5. This is obviously a play on words, similar to the Frosties, but different. Now these ones increase sprint speed, increase slide distance, and improves a jump. So these could be the closest equivalent to the Bones of Ao in Destiny 2. The term improves jump is very ambiguous, so we don't exactly know what that means, where it gives you a bonus jump. I think it will probably say that if it did, but improves jump, maybe you jump a bit higher with them. We're not too sure, but there you go. Stompies seem to be kind of like a Bones of Ao, but of course they also have bonus sprint speed and the slide distance on top of that. Now moving into the chest pieces for the Hunter with the Dragon's Shadow, grants increased movement and weapon handling speed for a short time after dodging, Seems okay, the Lucky Raspberry is returning, increases chaining capabilities of the Arc Bolt Grenade, and has a chance to recharge it every time it deals damage. And there's also the Raiden Flux. This is that glowing chess piece, which I pointed out and thought might be exotic earlier. Now this one has quick successive attacks with Arc Staff, increases damage and output duration. I talked about this exotic before, but these are the Void Shoulder Horns. Your Shield Bash melee kills in your Super recharge your Shield Throw, and melee ability kills recharge your Sentinel Super faster. You got the Synthesets for the Titan, increased melee attack range and improved damage while surrounded. The Actium War Rig instantly reloads a portion of your equipped auto rifle ammo from the reserves, which is really strange. The Crest of Alpha Loopy is returning, looking a bit different. Generates one additional orb of light from supers, and also something about a healing pulse. You got Hallow Fire Heart, greatly increases the recharge rate of your soul abilities while Hammer of Soul is charged. The June Marches increase sprint speed and something while attacking an enemy. I think it says building up an arc charge, and this will chain to enemies nearby. You have the Lion Rampants, provides additional aerial maneuverability. And then finally, the Peacekeeper Boots reloads stowed submachine guns and allows you to raid them instantly. So it sounds very, very random, to be honest. You also got a bunch of Warlock exotic helmets, the Crown of Tempest. I pointed this out in a recent video. So Arc Ability Kills increase the recharge rate of your Arc Abilities, which is pretty cool. We have Eye of Another World, which already covered again, highlights priority targets and improves the regeneration of your grenade, melee, and rift abilities. We have Nazerex Sin, Void Damage Kills Grant Ability Energy, and also Skull of Diahamkara returning, provides additional damage resistance during Nova Bomb, and also Nova Bomb Kills Grant Super Energy. So there you go, that was a ton of exotics. Now, if I was to be completely honest, I am not really that bothered about any of those exotics. They didn't really have that many cool perks. There's not really many that stuck out to me. Let me know what you think, but to me, I know they seemed very underwhelming compared to Destiny 1. Of course, we had to play them, so you can't judge them too hard, but a lot of them seemed very, very bland and safe, which is a kind of theme we're seeing, unfortunately, in Destiny 2. A lot of exotics do have very kind of tame perks, but again, to me, they just didn't really seem too exciting. Like, I want exotics to be crazy cool, like some of the ones we had in Destiny 1, but to be honest, most of those ones just seem to like speed the recharge rate of your melee or like give you a slight boost in something. It wasn't really that drastic, so I'm definitely hoping a lot of the other exotic armor pieces are a lot more impressive in terms of their perks. I think the one I did like was the Crown of Tempest. Arc ability kills increase the recharge rate of your arc abilities. That sounds pretty decent, so hopefully they're a lot more like that. Just really creative new ones because most of them seem to be just slightly increasing one of your ability recharge rates. So let me know what you thought of those down below in the comment section. And of course, there's a bunch of returning ones in there, so let me know your thoughts on those as well. So let's talk about the perks of all three of the Taken King subclasses, beginning with the Night Stalker. So funnily enough, it seems to be pretty similar, if not identical to Destiny 1, which is, I guess, some way disappointing and some way kind of cool. I mean, it depends if you like the Night Stalker in Destiny 1, but the perks are nearly identical, barring a couple of changes. So the perks for the first tree, called Path of the Trapper, you got the Snare Bomb, which is basically a smoke bomb that kind of damages people over time. You got Keen Scout, which lets you sneak faster, gain enhanced tracker and track enemies with marked targets. You've also got Deadfall, which means the void anchors fired from shadow shots become trapped and wait for your prey, so same thing in Destiny 1. 
The only new thing is the bottom arm called Vanishing Step. Dodging makes you vanish from sight for a short time. So it's kind of like the smoke grenade, but instead you just shade step or dodge and that's going to turn you invisible. So it sounds pretty cool to be honest. So the bottom tree or bottom cluster is called Way of the Pathfinder. Again, pretty similar. You've got Vanish in the Smoke, so throw a smoke bomb and it's going to turn your allies invisible. You've got Lockdown, Seal Grenade and Smoke Effects last twice as long, allowing for strong territorial control and increased damage potential. You've got Heart of the Pack, which increase the orbs generated from your tether and also recovery, resilience and mobility for you and your nearby allies. And the bottom one is Mobius Quiver. Fire Shadow Shot multiple times. This is the same as Quiver Base. You fire three shots instead of the one Shadow Shot Super. So it does seem like the main melee is going to be a smoke grenade, the same as Destiny 1, so you basically got a wombo combo back. But yeah, the Night Stalker is almost identical to Destiny 1. Some of you might like that, some of you might not. Now the Stormcaller is basically the same thing, you've got the similar perks. The first one is called Attunement of Ions. This one's got Chain Lightning, so increased melee range, Transcendence, you've got Arc Web, and then Ionic Blink. The second one is called Attunement of the Elements. This one's a little bit different. You've got Gale Force, which is the same thing about the melee extending range, but also recharge your super grenade and melee a little bit faster. You've got Landfall, again, which you already know. You've got Rising Storm, which means your Rift charges faster when allies are nearby. And then Arc Soul is the most interesting and new one. Your Rift now grants the ability for you or any ally that passes near it an Arc Soul to aid in battle. So I have no idea what that means, an Arc Soul. Let me know down below in the comment section what do you think an arc soul means because it's going to aid you in battle somehow but apparently that's a thing in the achievement of elements and then finally the sunbreaker we have code of the fireforge the first perk is a hammer strike we're essentially like a shoulder charge but solar you also got tempered metal so any solar ability kills is going to grant you and your teammates bonus movement and reload speed your battle forge enemies killed by your hammer explode and the final one i think is called vulcan's forge your hammers shatter into explosive molten embers on impact now the second path is called Code of the Siege Breaker. The first perk is Mortar Plus, so strike an enemy with the melee to release a solar explosion, setting nearby enemies on fire. You've got Sun Warrior, so solar ability kills restore your health. Grenade and melee ability kills leave a deadly sunspot. And then you've got Rings of Fire while standing in a sunspot. Your solar abilities charge faster and your super last longer. And the final one, Solar Charge, hammers create a sunspot and impact. While standing in there, you have more hammers to throw faster. So there was also some official news coming from Bungie today, not a leak surprisingly enough, but it was kind of buried. They announced the date of the raid and also trials when it's going to go live. So the raid is going to go live 10 a.m. Pacific, the usual time, on September 13th. So exactly one week after Destiny 2 launches, the following Wednesday. And trials goes live that same week on the 15th on the Friday. So there you have it, the raid and the trials. They didn't give any info about the name or any info about raid or trials in itself. They're still going to keep tight-lipped about it. And they basically gave the impression they aren't going to have any trailers, any teasers about any of the things. So we're literally going to find out where the raid is, what it's about, and the name on the actual date, which is pretty interesting. But there you go, an absolute mountain of information to digest. I know it's a lot. If you did enjoy the video, if you found it formative, a like rating would be much appreciated. I made a really detailed video yesterday about, yes again, another leak, which is about the Azaris DLC number one. If you want to watch that, you can click on screen right now. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.